Hi folks, I'm Steve Butler. I love the smells and sound of the wood shop, the rhythmic tapping of a mallet, the whistle of a hand plane as it slices across a board. Today, we're making both of those. Come see how we do it here in the garage. The first project we're going to start with is building our mallet. Now they come in all different shapes and sizes. There's this one we have, this is a timber framing mallet. Greenwood mallet, this is made out of red maple. I actually took this from the wood pile and you can still see the moisture coming out of the ends. And I simply put the handle in, we attached it with a wedge inside, what's called a blind wedge. And as this dries, as the head of the mallet dries, it literally the mortise will shrink and dry around the handle, locking it in place. We have a nice turned mallet here, a little mallet that's used for fine work, and then we have today's project. Now this is a mallet I made a few weeks ago. It's out of a piece of ash that I salvaged from a pallet, and you know, I simply just put a dowel rod in there. It comes all the way through the head of the mallet, and you can see I have a, a hardwood wedge in there which splays out the handle and locks it in place. All right, collect your offcuts. Here I have a bunch of three-quarter um, dowel rods if I wanted to make a smaller mallet. Um, broom handles, anything you want. Just cut them up and, uh, you know, you only need so many mallets, but you can make them for Christmas gifts for your woodworking buddies. All right, here is, look at this. This is a big chunk of ash wood taken right off the pallet. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a five inch block from this to make our mallet. Now, you know, there's a little more to mallets. It's, you know, they're quite simple to make, but they're cut on an angle. And the reason they're cut on an angle is you, you swing it. You don't want fatigue in your arm. You, why overwork yourself? So the angle is so that when you drive it down, it's now parallel to whatever you're hitting, a nail head, a dowel rod, and you use the whole tool in a sense. You use it for what it's made for. Instead of just hitting a little spot there or there, you get the full power of the mallet. And you don't tire your arm. Think of a blacksmith. You hear the blacksmith, ding, 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 just making this song with his, his hammer. Well, that's basically so that there's some bounce, so that the, it does the work instead of him and, and tiring out his arm. All right, so we're gonna cut our block to about five inches. Now this angle is a little arbitrary. These tools are personal, so make it your own. Figure out what works. This one's cut at 10 degrees. That's just what I chose, what I like. Put a, a nice curve on the top. And if you wanted to, you could also angle the sides. All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is cut our block to size. This is about five inches long. I mean, it's a little arbitrary. You can trim it down later, whatever. One side, one end, part of me is already cut at 10 degrees. So I'm just going to take my bevel gauge, lay out the other line. Again, doesn't have to be exact. You want to clamp down or screw down to your bench, your saw. Safety glasses if you have them. I'm doing a lot of talking, so I'm not wearing a dust mask. And I'm just going to lay this up to the outside of the line, to the waist side of my line. Now, this edge is right off the pallet. If you wanted to, you could put this over the joiner and square it up so it sits properly against your saw fence. All right, that looks great. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center. I mean, I want to mark the center. I mean, there's nothing fancy. I'm just going corner to corner here. And what we're doing is laying out the hole for the handle. And why I'm doing it on both sides is because I'm going to use a Forstner bit. And the Forstner bit will only go so far. So then I'll be able to turn it over 
and coming from the other side. That's why you want to cut that curve last. Keep this square. If you, you could use a long spade bit and it would go out the depth of the mallet head. You could use a thin, long twist bit first and it would go all the way through and leave a small hole and that could give you a starting point uh, for the Forstner bit to go into, but I find this just as easy to do. So there we go. We have our center lines on the top and bottom. Now we're just going to go over to the drill press and with a Forstner bit and drill our hole. I'm using, this is a 15 16 piece of dowel rod. Uh, I took it off the handle of something. It's a hardwood. You don't want to use softwood. Last thing you want is this to come flying off. And so we're just going to drill all the way through, just like this one. And then we're going to take a saw and cut a kerf in there to fit our wedge. And again, that's going to splay it out and lock the handle. All right, let's go to the drill press. There's nothing like making your own hand tools. I mean, there's people that that's all they do and they make museum quality tools. Um, I'm a little more simple than that. I, uh, I just want them to work. They, they have to feel good in my hands. Uh, I mean a mallet. It's a simple mallet, but it fills you with pride. You use this mallet to adjust the hand plane you made. And uh, you're using the hand plane to help you make a piece of furniture. So it's the ultimate repurpose project. All right, I've installed a 15 16 Forstner bit in there. Have our center lines drawn. Now, if you feel more comfortable, clamp this down to your drill press table. You don't want this spinning around on you. And I'm just going to bring the drill bit down. Mark my center line, go halfway through, turn it over, and do the same thing for the other side. Make sure you have your safety glasses on. You don't want these shavings coming at you. Back out now and then, clean the shavings out. There we go, that looks great. Now we're just gonna go to the bandsaw and shape our curve on the head of our mallet as well as cut the kerf for the wedge in the handle. Using the tools I make uh, sort of gives me that pioneer spirit. And uh, it's, just, it's just perfect. I mean, you can variations. Like I said, this is a, a piece of uh, red maple I took from my neighbor's backyard from a, a, a tree he fell. And we just cut that same angle on it um, so that it hits whatever you know whatever you're using it hits it directly on that flat surface and you don't get a lot of fatigue in your arm but well, look at that this looks very rustic and crude but it works just as well okay now what we're going to do is cut this curve now it's arbitrary we're then going to take it to the belt sander and finish it off you could use a steel rule it's flexible enough just clamp it down draw that curve just do it by eye drafting tool, whatever you want. Over at the bandsaw here, and I've raised the blade so it's about a quarter of an inch or the thickness of a pencil above my workpiece. We're just gonna come in, nip off these corners, go to the belt sander, clean that up. Then, we're gonna cut a kerf in our handle. And what you, you wanna make sure, you don't wanna, you know, I'm doing it on the bandsaw, you could use a handsaw, put this in your vise. You want to make sure you go across the grain. If you go with the grain, it's just like splitting a log that's just going to run with you and your handle could split in half completely. I then just have a little piece of hardwood. I'm just going to make a little wedge with that. And you know, you could, you could use a piece of ash again to, to put in here as your wedge. I just like the, the contrast of the colors of using in, uh, the other piece of hardwood like that. All right, let's get going. Make sure you let the blade come up to full speed, the saw. Safety glasses. Now I'm just gonna come in and make a little relief cut in the center, and there's nothing fancy at all here. We're just gonna take our time, nip off the corners. There we go. While I'm at the bandsaw, just gonna wait till this comes to a stop. Gonna lower the blade, 
and put the kerf in the handle. All right, set up my bench top belt sander. I'm just going to go ahead, sand the curve, I'm going to sand the faces and our ends, and then we'll go ahead and attach the handle. That looks great. If you wanted to, you could use a router bit. You could do this by hand. If you don't have a bench top belt sander, just use a portable belt sander by hand, a hand plane, files, rasp, whatever you like. That looks great. All right, let's go attach our handle. All right, well, I had the sander set up. I just went and I hit the handle on it just to create a little grip for my hand. You can, you can carve this, whatever you want. Again, make it personal, it's your tool. So, I'm just simply going to put the mallet head in my vise. I'm going to wipe some glue in the mortise. You don't want copious amounts. You don't want this spilling all out on your, on your bench vise. And then I'm just going to brush it on and then put some. I'm just going around the walls of the mortise here. And then I'm just going to put a little bit on the handle. Again, you don't want too much on the handle because it's a tight fit. It's going to squeeze the glue out anyway. So, just just enough to get purchase. There we go. Now, just going to put some glue in there, in the kerf, put our wedge in. It's going to splay that and lock that handle into our mallet head. Looks great. You can leave this handle proud, the wedge proud. I'm going to take it to the sander and just clean that off. There we go. Just going to let that dry, the glue dry, saw off the excess wedge, hit this on the belt sander. Perfect. All right, I went ahead and I trimmed our wedge and our dowel flush with the curved top. That looks awesome. What you can do, um, and the earlier mallet I made, I, I contoured the handle to fit my hand. This is personal, it's your tool. Do whatever you want. You can carve, carve the handle out, make it your own, drill a hole, put a rope in there, hang it up on the wall, keep it in your toolbox. Again, the, the, one of the best things about this project is economy. You don't have to spend a lot of money, and, uh, and then you, you have two new tools to put in your toolbox and use. This is the end cut, but this was this piece of ash that I took off a, a pallet. You know, it's, it's a little squirrely grain, it's not good for furniture, but it's perfect um, for the mallet. I mean, look at that, it just, it looks so nice, that grain. Great for a mallet. Cost, not a thing. All right, let's have a look at our hand plane project. Essentially, we're going to take a wooden block, about 10 inches long, 3 inches square, and we're going to make a smoothing plane, that size. Now, this is one I made earlier, and what we do, we're using what's called the sandwich method. It consists of the bandsaw mostly, and then we'll go over to the chop saw. And it was made popular by a cabinet maker by, called James Krenoff. Now, if you have a look, I have my block. This one's just pine. I'm using just to demonstrate. <clears throat> and we're going to cut two cheeks off on the bandsaw, and there and there. And I want to leave two inches in the center just because that's the width of the blade I'm using. If you're using a wider, thinner blade, you would accommodate that. I go to antique stores, thrift stores, flea markets, and I'll buy an old hand plane for three, five dollars, whatever, purely for the irons, the blades, and the chip breakers. You can get better quality or thicker quality steel ones out of the mail order catalogs. These work great when they're sharpened up. Why spend a lot of money when you don't have it? Now this is pretty easy. Don't be intimidated to do this. Making your own hand tools can be, you know, a little daunting, but very rewarding in the end. So, we are going to go to the bandsaw and cut two cheeks. But essentially, we're resawing off of our block. Okay, remove that, and then we're going to make a 
degree cut, and that's where our plane iron, we're lying on that one, and then a 62 degree cut, and that angle's perfect for just letting the shavings escape. And then our center piece, we're gonna keep for later. And then what we're gonna do, let me show you on mine. On our 45 degree block, we're gonna route a little channel. And what that does, it accommodates the cap screw. So it'll sit in there without any interference and your blade will lay properly flat right on there. So then we will just glue this back up after we route the, the channel, of course. And look at that, you can kind of see how that's starting. And what we'll do is we're gonna drill a hole at a certain spot, I'll show you later, and that will accommodate the dowel or the piece we have which holds the blade and the wedge in place. And that's what we're using with that centerpiece, that scrap block is going to then become our wedge. So you're utilizing all of this, it's pretty easy. So the first thing we're gonna do, now I have an oak block here, and you wanna use a substantial hardwood for a hand plane, of course. And this is wider than I needed, but it was a scrap piece I had, I'm, I'm gonna trim it down later on anyways. So I'm going to go to the bandsaw, cut my cheeks, and then I'm gonna go to the chop saw and cut those angle blocks. And you can do that on the bandsaw if you want, but then you'll spend a lot more time flattening those beds. All right, now I've set my bandsaw up. Now I'm lucky, this bandsaw comes with a, a pivot block that you use to ride your block up against, and you can make any adjustment in case there's any drift in the blade. If you don't have one of these, you can just clamp on a piece of scrap wood, whatever is easiest for you. Now, I've also drawn some lines on the back of my block, so when it comes time to gluing this up, we don't get you know, in the wrong order. It's easy, it just all helps for setup. I've drawn my cheek lines on here. Now this is oak, sometimes the, the pencil lines get lost in the grain of the oak. If you want to, you could use a, a colored pencil and uh, just whatever's easier for you to, to do. Got my light on on the bandsaw and I have a stick for at the end, a little push stick to help. I have my glasses on and I'm just gonna put some earplugs in and uh, we'll get going. There we go. We've cut our cheeks off, so now we're just going to take our center block and go and cut our angle pieces. All right, let's have a look at our sample block here. Again, what I'm going to do, taking our block, we're going to make a 45 degree cut and a 62 degree cut, and then keep our wedge, our scrap piece, and glue this together. So I've set up my chop saw. And this is why you want to draw a cabinet maker's triangle or some sort of witness mark. You want to put it on the top and you want to put it on the back so afterwards, just like a puzzle, you can align these parts easy enough. Okay, just make sure everything's tight and in place. If you want to, again, you can do this on the bandsaw, but then you're probably going to have to spend more time filing or sanding to keep this level. So I prefer to use a steady chop saw. You can do it on the table saw as well. All right, that looks great. So this is how this is going to work. We have our two blocks, our 45 degree angle and our 62 degree angle. We're going to be gluing these back up and that creates the mouth opening for our blade. We're going to tune this up a little later on, I'll get to that. And we have our center piece which we're going to use for our wedge. One of the things you have to watch though when making your own hand plane, this is simply a piece of red oak, you can make them out of anything. Um, you, want to, you want to watch the grain direction. Just like when you're sanding or hand planing a piece of wood, if you're going against the grain, you're going to get some resistance. Well, you want to make sure the sole of the plane, the grain direction is going in the right way. And how you tell that, you, you want to look on your block. Well, here's our oak block. 
that we, we used. Here's the cutoff of it. And the grain, if you look on the side, the grain is running downhill. And that's what you want. So this would be the front of our plane. It's kind of, imagine a cat. If uh, I use this analogy a lot. If you're patting a cat, when you go from the head to the tail, it's nice and smooth. If you do it the reverse, the hair stands up. It's exactly the same thing. All right, I've set up my router table with a three quarter inch straight bit in it, and we're gonna use it to route a channel to accommodate the cap screw. And that goes on our 45 degree angle block. That's the one that the blade and the chip breaker are gonna sit on. I have a stop block. We're not going all the way through. I mean, you can if you want, but there's no sense, you know, taking away too much of the wood if not necessary. My fence is set, and I'm gonna do this in two passes. This is oak. I don't wanna hog it out too much all at once. All right. Let that come to a full stop before you take this off. There we go. Now I'm just going to raise the router bit, take a second pass. Perfect, there we go. You can see how that will sit flat on there. That's great. Now, we're gonna take our pieces. And again, that's why it was real important to have that triangle on there or any marks, line it up. We're gonna go ahead and glue this up. We're going to let that sit up for about an hour and in the meantime we'll go and we'll work on our wedge piece. We're using that center block, that scrap block from our cutoffs and we'll make our wedge. I have a coin in the back on some of them. This one and that just helps uh, when you're hitting the mallet using it and, and adjusting it. So again this is another piece of ash. Um, I rescued from a, a pallet and made a hand plane from it. It's since worn a bit. I just added a little epoxy, keep it in shape. All right, let me show you what I did. I took our block out of our clamps and I went ahead and I trimmed the cheeks off on the bandsaw and I cut the profile out and then I went to my belt sander and sanded it smooth. I also drilled a hole for the dowel that's going to hold the wedge in place. Now let me show you on this sample block here. Okay, here's the cheeks we cut off. There's a dowel peg I have in here. And what I did is I measured an inch and a quarter up from where the two angle blocks meet. And then I drew a line. And I put our blade with the chip breaker in it. Make sure it lays flat. And then I took a measure about 7 sixteenths away from the chip breaker and made a center point line right where that inch and a quarter line meets and what that does it tells me where to drill a hole the diameter of the dowel you're using in this case I'm using a 5 8 piece of dowel you could use a half inch whatever and that's it and with the block glued up I drilled right through in the drill press you could do it by hand and and then just put that dowel piece in there and glued it in. In this case, I just put a little of epoxy in there. So, what then was left to do with that center waste piece we had, you want to use that to make your wedge. So, let me just move this out of the way. I took, I just took a, 
a line, drew a line on that scrap piece, went to the bandsaw again, and cut out a wedge. And you want to make sure you leave enough meat at the back because you're going to be using a mallet to tap this home. Now here is the, the flat surface, the original flat surface, and you want to make sure you keep this flat. This has to lay perfectly flat. Well, first of all, the blade has to stay perfectly flat on that angled piece. You want to make sure that happens, or else when you use this hand plane, the blade's probably going to come back out. And then the wedge, that flat surface, lays flat against there. Now look at that. Again, I didn't even bother to sand that. That's a nice fit. No gaps. Perfect. And you just want to see the blade come out slightly, just so there's a shadow. All right. There we have it. The true test. Awesome. Look at that. Your own hand plane made out of a block of wood that was destined for the scrap pile. All right. Our mallet used to help adjust our hand plane. Give this one a try. Don't be intimidated. It's not as hard as you think, and there's nothing like using your own um, hand tools that you created. All right. As usual, I had a lot of fun building this project with you. I hope you'll come back and see us here in the garage. All right, let's have a look at our hand plane project. Now, the style of hand plane we make. It, oh. Well, the real speed. Oh, the real speed did show up.